So you want to make your own start screen just like this. Press the start button and you're in the game. You hit escape. You go ahead and come up here. You hit the quit button. You're out of it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how right now. All right, so if you haven't already made yourself a contents folder within the content folder, go ahead and do that now just to make sure that everything's organized. You don't have to do this, but it helps with organization. So you might as well. Now, I went ahead and made a maps folder as well as a widgets folder. Now within the maps, you can ignore this. What we're gonna focus on is this L underscore main menu. So go ahead and create a new map by right clicking, create level, and then title it L underscore main menu. All right, then we're gonna go to the widgets folder. We're gonna right click. We're gonna go to user interface and we're gonna go to widget blueprint. Then we're gonna click user widget and we're gonna name it W underscore main menu, just like this one right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and name mine W underscore main menu test just to show y'all. First thing we're gonna do is grab a canvas panel out of the panel section and add it right onto the top. So now we have the border. Then we're gonna scroll up a little bit and we're gonna grab this image right here and we're gonna add it onto the canvas panel. And we're gonna click on the image. We're gonna to go to anchors, we're gonna to go to full screen and then we're gonna zero out everything on the offsets. So it's full screen. From here, you can change the tint if you'd like to, make it black, you can make it whatever color you'd like. You can do whatever you want with that, but we are going to put it to white for right now. Actually, I'm gonna change it to black. So we're gonna grab the vertical box and we're gonna drop it on the canvas panel. We're actually going to drop two of them on there and we're going to come up here. We're going to click on one. We're going to name it start button and we're going to name the other one quit button. Now we click on the start button and we grab the anchor and we set it to center and we do the same thing with the quit button. So this is just so that it centers in the very center of the screen, no matter what the resolution is. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to position X and Y and we're going to zero these out. And from here we can scroll in. The most important piece of information to know about position X, position Y, size of X and Y is whatever these values are, the center point will be half of whatever these values are. So position X will be half of 50 and then position Y, if I put in negative 15, it should be half of 30 and it is perfectly centered at this point. So from here, you can just mess around with the values to whatever your preference is. So for me, I'm going to set the values for negative 150 and negative 50 for positions and then 300 and 100 so that I have a solid start button in the center of the screen. We'll compile, save. Then from here, we just come down, grab the quit button and do exactly the same thing. I can move it down with the mouse cursor, get it as close as possible and then make it exact by altering the numbers up here. And that's how you make the boxes right there. Now we'll scroll up here until we find button and we'll grab a button and we'll go ahead and put one button on each box and then we'll come down to the button. We will rename this one start and then we will name this one quit. Then we will come right down here and we'll click fill for this and we'll click on the button. We'll click fill for this so the buttons are now full size. We'll compile save and we'll come right back up here and we'll grab some text and we'll grab and drop the text right on top of the buttons. So the text blocks are there, and then we can just come here, change the text to start text, and change the bottom one to quit text. And then we can come right here, and we can change the actual text to quit game. And then hit enter, that should fix it. And then we go to the top, and we click start game. And then we can change the color and opacity. We'll change it all the way down to make it black, so that way it pops out. Um, click this, change it all the way down to black, and then we can click on the actual button itself, and, doo -doo 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 -doo. and we can come up here to the style and the normal, we can grab the tint, and we can change the tint of the button, so we'll make this one red for quit, and we'll come up here, and we will change this one to be green for start. So booyah. So now what we do is we grab the start button, we click on that, and we scroll all the way down until we see these on clicked events, and we click plus here, and it'll open the graph. And then what we want to do is go back to the designer and go to the quit button and do the exact same thing. On clicked, boom. Now we have these on clicked start and quit nodes that we will be using in just a second. All right, so right here next to start, we right click and we click open level by name and we drag it up. We connect this node and you want to make sure that the name of whatever level you're trying to open is spelled exactly or else it won't work. So third, person map is what it is. Compile save. We right click, we go set input mode 
to game only. And then we connect that up and then we right click once again and type in get player controller. And then just connect that blue pin right there. Cool. Compile save. And then for right here on the quit, we just drag out and type in quit game. Simple as that. And that is everything within the widget completed that you have to know. So now what we do is we come in here and we go to your maps and we go to the main menu map that we opened. We'll save everything. So we come up here to the top, we click the blueprint button right here and we go to open level blueprint. I went ahead and cleared everything that was in here so that I can start from scratch. All right, so within the blueprint, what we're gonna do is we pull off of this pin and we type in create widget. So what we do from here is we click this little drop down window and we can either choose the test that we've been working on or my min menu. We'll choose the test for right now to see if it works. And then we pull off of here and we type in add to viewport. If I could type in add to viewport and we connect the return value to the target. So then we drag off of here and we type in set input mode to UI only. Okay, so the next thing we do is we right click and type in get player controller. And we grab this return value, plug it in there, and then we pull off and we type in set show mouse cursor right there. And then we connect that up and we pop it up and we click that and we compile and we save and we are all done. All right, so now what we can do is we can just come up here and close these and now we stay on our level main menu and bada bing bada boom We click the play button. We click the start game. It starts the game for us. It works perfectly We click the play button again. We click the quit game and it quits the game perfectly and That is it. That is all you need to know to make a very simple very easy start screen for yourself that you can customize as much as you want and personalize to whatever degree you'd like. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is one of the first videos and hopefully a long series of video tutorials that I'll be releasing covering many different functions of Unreal Engine 5 as I continue to learn about it for myself. I hope this video was helpful and if it was helpful to you, please do me a favor and leave a comment on what you guys would like to see me make a tutorial on in the future, as well as a like to show me that you enjoy the content. Peace and love you guys. Near out.